How's it going everybody? Adam here from Coding Basics and welcome to tutorial number three in my programming leap motion with Python series. Uh, the first video of the series, someone asked me if it is possible to um, get the leap motion to work with the Raspberry Pi. It is possible, so I am going to start that series later on this week to show you how to do it. As far as this video goes, we are going to go over getting data from each frame that we receive. So, this is what we have so far in our program from the first two tutorials. And what we are going to be doing for the rest of this series is programming our on-frame class. So right now it's just pass um, is the only line in there because we haven't programmed anything for it. But now we are. So, first line we're going to create a uh, new frame object. So every time this on frame method gets called, we're going to create a new object called frame and set it equal to the controller object that we pass in dot frame. And you're going to open close parentheses. This is the frame that gets sent from the leap motion to our computer. And now in this video we're going to go over getting some data or what kind of data we can get from each frame. So first, all we're gonna really going to be doing is printing out the data. So print. First thing we're going to get from our uh, frame is the ID number. Each frame has a unique ID number. So frame ID. And then we're going to print the string representation of the frame ID, which we get by uh, typing frame dot ID. Don't need parentheses for those. Now just to make this a little bit more readable, I am going to put a forward slash and continue printing on the next line. So the next thing that's going to get printed out is the timestamp. So f uh, time stamp. Sorry about that pause. I'm kind of cooking my lunch at the same time and my pot was boiling over. So the timestamp we get by uh, typecasting to string frame dot timestamp. And what this is going to return is the time, not in milliseconds, but in microseconds since our leap has started. Uh, next is going to be the uh, number of hands that are detected inside the frame. So number of hands and we'll get that by first we're going to have to get the length of our frame dot hands list. So when you call, oops, it's frame, not frame. When you call frame.hands, you get a list of all the hands in the, uh, uh, not a list of all the hands, er, yeah, I guess, yeah, a list of all the hands detected inside the frame. We're going to call length to get the total number of hands there are, but then we also have to typecast this to a string. Next is the number of fingers. So almost the exact same. Uh, going to print out number of fingers. And then string length frame dot fingers. OK. And next is the number of tools. So when your leap motion is running, if you hold like a pen over it or a pencil, it'll detect it as a tool. And uh, exact same thing as number of uh, hands and fingers. So number of tools, str length frame dot tools. And uh, I'll mention it now. 
I, th I read somewhere that the tool it picks up the best on is a chopstick. So if you have a chopstick laying around your house or you have Chinese food one night, keep it to use with your leap motion. It seems to be what works the best. And then the final thing we're printing out is the number of gestures detected. So, um, number of gestures. And for that, we're going to print out the exact same thing. String length frame dot gestures. And that is our whole print statement. So let's run this. I already got, uh, save this first, I guess. Save. I already got PowerShell opened. I've already navigated to my folder where it's saved in. If you haven't, do that. Now we're going to run it. I'm just disconnecting my Leap Motion. Okay. So now I'm going to connect my Leap Motion again. Get our connected message. Okay. So. We got one error here. Uh, oops, okay, so the gestures method, I forgot. The gestures method is the one that needs the open uh, close brackets behind it. So that was our error there. So save it. That should fix everything. There we go. Now we're going. So I'm going to put my left hand over and it's now detecting one hand. If I put both hands over, it should get a two. There we go. Now, we did up here enable a couple type of gestures, so I'm gonna see if the leap motion will pick up on one. I'm gonna do the drawing circle vector. So there we go. It's picking up on the one gesture. Now, if I hold, I don't have any tools handy here, but okay, let's see here, see if this works. Oh, nope, it's not picking up on this short little pencil I had on my desk I guess I would need something a little bit longer but it would work if the pencil was a little bit longer otherwise it just thinks it's another finger so everything seems to be working I'm just gonna end this program by hitting enter and it exits out of the program that's all I want to talk about in this video guys thank you for watching next time we will go over getting hand data so data from each individual hand in the frame so leave a comment on this video, like the video, and please subscribe, guys. The whole point of this channel is to not only help people out, but I am trying to get a following, try to get a little bit of extra money to put towards my uh, college tuition and stuff. So I really appreciate any support you'd give me. Another thing I'll mention, too, is to go along with helping people, I have recently started a channel called Coding Basics Espanol. So I'm looking for people to help me out. Um, who don't want to speak Spanish to do tutorials there just so more people can learn how to program. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you next time.